kind of don't know how to start this. I don't want to be awkward. Ah, maybe I should do a turn. Hiya. Hello. That'll do, won't it? Something like that as an intro. My name is Esme Bowler and I was run up on Mamma Mia, I Have a Dream. Um, that's just finished December the 10th. I was on ITV for eight weeks and yeah, it was kind of crazy. For those who watched it, I hope you enjoyed. Um, we had a great time. Sorry, I'm just cleaning the screen of my Mac because I've written out all the questions. But some of the questions, some of them were like, <laughs> who'd you fancy? <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you to everyone who replied to my Insta story and sent in questions. Look, I've written them down. How, look at that, I've even put some pink flowers on there. Aren't I professional, eh? So I'm gonna try and get through all of them. What I did, uh, a lot of people sent like the same sort of questions. What I did was I like combined the questions sort of thing all together. I've got my coffee and I'm ready to go. Question one is, how did you get into performing musical theatre? How did I get into performing musical theatre? When I was 13, I auditioned for a show called Cats at the Liverpool Empire Youth Theatre Company, which was such an amazing uh, youth theatre group. It was a really good place for me to start. And um, basically I went to go watch, I know this is really niche, so forgive me, but I went to go and watch the um, Les Mis film. I know it's really bait, like I know it's really boring, but I went to go watch that when I was 12, because I think it was out in 2012. I should probably check that. But I went to go and watch that, and obviously Samantha Box was in that, and I just remember watching it, and I was like, I just was like crying, the ho I was just crying the whole way through, and I was like so moved, and I was like, God, why am I so like, I'm so moved by this. And I remember when I went to see a panto when I was really young, I think it was like Aladdin or something, I watched it and I was like, oh, that looks really fun. Like, I, I wonder if they get paid to like stand on a stage and sing. So I think maybe, Maybe from watching that, I was a bit like, oh, I'd want to do something like that. But yeah, I think the moment it hit was when I saw the Les Mis film. And then I went to see Les Mis in the West End and I literally was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, I have to do this. I watched the Les Mis film. I went to see Les Mis. I auditioned for Cats. I got in youth theatre, not the real one. Let's not get confused. Then I left school at 16. I went to college and did a musical theatre degree at a place called Rare in Liverpool. And then at 18 auditioned for i think i auditioned for gsa first i, was, I wanted gsa art said mount view erdang i auditioned for gsa and i didn't even get a recall and i was like you know if i can't get a recall for gsa i'm not going to get a recall for art said let's be realistic and so when i did audition for art said i was like there's no pressure i was like i'm not going to get in i was like i'll use this year as a trial run next year then hopefully i'll get in and yeah i don't know what happened I don't know what I did, but somehow Art said let me in. That's how I ended up there. Okay, question number two. What is your dream role? Okay, my dream role, I have a couple. The role that's always been like such a dream of mine and anyone who knows me knows that I'm gonna say this. It's Jenna in Waitress. I don't quite, I don't quite know why, I just think something about that part, like, and the songs, they sit very well in my voice. And I just think like the journey that that character goes on through the show is is incredible. And like, she's such a strong character, but yet she has so many challenges. And she's so delicate, but she's so strong. And I know I'm far too young to play it right now, but I would love to delve into that role. And that is just such a dream role of mine, the songs the show itself, like it's so feel good. Like who doesn't want to bake pies eight times a week? I do. I actually went to see that on Broadway with Sarah Borelli's who obviously wrote the show. Uh, I went to see her as Jenna, which was a once in a lifetime. I cried the whole way through. Don't, don't remember seeing much because I was just like, my eyes were streaming. I was 16. So um, yeah, that was a moment. And then I actually waited for her at stage door I was like, I'm gonna meet her and I'm gonna tell her how much I love this show and how much I wanna be in it. Um, and she came out and she was like, she was like, thank you guys, um, I'm gonna go. And I literally was like, ah. 
So I didn't get to meet her and tell her how much it changed my life. Anyway, okay. Question number three. Favourite off camera moment? Mm. I should have maybe thought about these before I started recording. I think it was probably just when we all got to like hang around the villa. We'd like be waiting to go um, and do our workshops or we were going to like have a chat with the judges or something. And we'd all just get to like chill around the villa and it was like kids in a playground like Stevie was doing cartwheels, the lads were like playing football, like we were all just, it was all just so nice and we were like sunbathing and getting to know everyone. And it was nice to just like chat to people and like just have a laugh and like get to know everyone and... What's that noise? I don't know, sorry if you can hear that. Yeah, I think just like having a laugh with everyone, having naps on the sofa. I'm gonna say that. Number four. How did you manage auditions around your day job? I'm gonna um, talk about this as if it was like before I auditioned. So I, when I graduated, I worked at a coffee shop um, and I was a supervisor there, I think for like nine months. And the schedule just got a bit like too much. It was quite hard to get time off. And that's a really important thing um, to consider. A lot of places will hire actors and, and they will say that they understand if you need to call in and be like, sorry, I have an audition. But it's so much easier said than done. Like, I understand from the business point of view, if a, if a, if a employee is to drop out literally the night before, you are gonna be like, oh my God, I've got no one to work tomorrow. But then for us, that's our main priority. And I was really lucky and I managed to find a company that only employ creatives. So this is at the hedge fund that I work at where I make coffee for the hedge fundy people. I can I can message and be like, I can't work this day. Does anyone want it? And someone will always be able to take it. So I think finding a good, we call it muggle job, muggle. Finding a good muggle job that understands the industry. And maybe if you can find one that is run by creatives, there's lots out there and they're really good when you do come by them. And usually they're good at giving you your job back as well, like after you've gone and done something. Like when I was out in Greece, I was obviously away for ages. I was away for like a month and then I was able to come back in the three months that we were waiting for the show to air. So yeah, I would say finding, finding a job that understands, that is maybe run by creatives as well, um, but always, always put your job first rather than their job if that's if that makes sense i don't know how to word that always put your future before the job that you have yeah always prioritize yourself and the audition over the job you have because a lot of jobs a lot of employees they can hire anyone they can always hire someone else you might not get that audition again obviously try not to annoy your employee too much but i would always just say put yourself first get to that audition get in the room because that's the most important thing for your future, not whether or not you're serving coffee. That, that's kind of how I handled it. Who did you think was gonna win? <laughs> Imagine I was just like, oh, I thought this person was gonna win. Um, no, I couldn't call it. You could not call it. I think as soon as I met the other six girls, I was like, oh my days, I, I, I have no idea, no idea who was gonna win. Because we also didn't know you know, day by day, we also didn't know what the judges were looking for that week and how much of the workshops had an impact as to whether you were staying or going, which was interesting actually, watch, being able to watch it back and being like, hearing the comments they'd made about you, when obviously you didn't know that in the moment. So the answer to question five is, I didn't, no one knew. What musical do you want to be in next? <gasps> I'd love to be an waitress but it's not around. Um, I know that Mean Girls is coming. I would absolutely love to be in Mean Girls. Oh my God, there's so many. There's so many. I would love to be in Greece. I'd love to be in Hairspray. I would love to be in, I think Clueless is coming. I would love to be in Les Mis. I will do, I will do anything. I will be in anything right now. I just wanna perform. I'm not desperate, I'm not desperate but I will do anything. But yeah, if I had to pick, what musical would you want to be in next? Waitress. What was your favorite song to perform on the show? Hmm. It's gotta be, it's got to be Just A Girl because by that point, like no one had gone home. The pressure wasn't too much. I was, I was worried about my song at first, actually, when I got given the song, because we didn't pick our songs, we got given them. When I got that song, I was like, 
I don't know it. I was like, does anyone know it? How am I going to be able to do this without it being just like a copy of something else? And then we managed to find a Kelly Clarkson version. So we sort of like mas mashed the Kelly Clarkson version with the um, Gwen Stefani and sort of like did a little mashup. And I just felt like, it just felt amazing. The, the song sat nicely in my voice. I I really related to like the lyrics and like what it was talking about and like it's something that I'm quite passionate about and with the staging as well like I was running around the stage I was like lying on the thing favorite memory from the show there was one morning when we all went down to the beach because the beach was like a two minute walk away and we all went and swam in the sea like I don't know seven in the morning the sun was rising it was like kind of cold but like kind of nice and then we got out and then we all went and got a nice coffee and we all just sat and I, I remember just looking out at the waves and like the sunrise and I was just like wow like this is incredible or maybe I have two for this one maybe I have two my birthday when we got to go to Cassiope was just like magical I couldn't believe that the one of one of the two days I had off was my birthday. And we got a mini bus and we all went to Cassiope, had some food, like the boys got me some presents. And then we went and lay on the beach and then we had a cocktail. Like that felt like a holiday. That day felt like a little getaway. That was probably my favorite memory and my favorite birthday that I've ever had. So I'll probably say that one. Where were all the clothes on the show from? Slash, how did the costumes work on the show? The costumes were from like all over. They were amazing though, all the costumes. Like we had a huge costume department with like rails and rails and rails of all these costumes. A lot of them, a few of them were from free people. It needed to be like boohoo and like Sophie themed. And a lot of um, free people stuff is very like edgy and like beachy and like young Donna kind of vibes you know, lots of flow skirts. But then also the costume department was so amazing. They would go into the lo like the local towns and they'd go to all like the local boutiques and a lot of like the long sheer like satin dresses were from there. How did it work? So we're kind of like assigned costumes. Like we all had our own rail with ideas of costumes because obviously we didn't know how far everyone was gonna get. Everyone had costumes from like beginning to end and you'd go in and they'd have some options and they'd try them on you and then they'd take a picture and any alterations like they were so good. You'd, you'd try it on, they'd pin it, you'd be gone 10 minutes, then they'd, they'd get you back and you try it on and it literally like fit like a glove, it was great. That's kind of how it worked. You would be assigned stuff. I'd go in, I'd try on like two dresses for the number. They'd send a picture to the producers. They'd write back to see which one they wanted you to wear, which one would look better on the stage and on camera and all stuff like that. Okay, what was provided by the TV? For example, flights, food, etc everything everything was provided apart from there were bits of filming where you were just for it, like yourself like the workshops and the little like beach hut moments you know when we're like speaking to the camera and we're all wearing our own things so we all had to get those ourselves because they wanted it to be like our wardrobe and like how we wanted to present ourselves sort of thing to make us look nice and unique so pretty much everything how did it feel to be on the west end stage Hmm, incredible. The final altogether felt electric. I know that's really cringe, but like it, it did. Like when I finished singing My Love My Life and I stood there and I could see everyone and like the applause. I actually felt like I was slapped in the face. I was like, wow. I just remember I was just like, oh my God, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Because I honestly, like the love I felt in my heart was just, oh. God, I thought it was gonna explode, it was amazing. It felt very um, safe. I know that's a weird thing to say, but it did, I felt, I felt very safe. Okay, next. Favorite musicals and West End stars. Hmm, yes. I love Hades Town. I love Miss Saigon. I love, everyone's talking about Jamie. Love that show. I love Mamma Mia, always loved Mamma Mia. I love Legally Blonde. I think it's so, I think it's so feel good. Uh, and West End stars. I've always loved 
um, Jessie Muller. I think that's her name, Jessie Muller, Jessie Muller. She's more of a Broadway star, like Broadway. She's incredible, I think her acting, I think her voice, I think she's so natural, I think she's beautiful, I think her voice is so unique. Um, I love Hannah Waddingham. I love that she's this tall, gorgeous woman and you know, she sort of doesn't care what anyone thinks about her. That's kind of what I wanna be. I want to be Hannah Waddingham. I wanna like follow in her footsteps. I wanna do the things she's done. Do you have Vinted? No. No, I don't. However, I do want to sell these. If anyone wants some Converse, I want to sell these because I've got the cream ones that I wore for um, just the girl. So I don't need the white ones. But yeah, comment if anyone would buy them. And uh, I don't know how to use Vinted. I should probably learn. But no, I don't have it. Yes, I would like it. Maybe I'll get it. Have you been offered any jobs since filming? No. Not yet. Who did you become closest to during Mamma Mia? You became so close to everyone. We were literally living together. Um, I clicked with Maisie from like day dot, even like the auditions. I remember seeing her and I was like, she's a bit of me. And I, I made a comment when we were out there, the producers um, asked us like who we were getting along with the most and stuff like that. And I said Maisie and I was like, but I don't know if it's just cause we're both blonde. And then I came out and I said to Maisie, I was like, who did you say? And she was like, I said you. And I was like, great, great. But we're so close with everyone. We're all like a little family. We all see each other. We all need to do a big, a big family outing. But yeah, you become so close with everyone. When did you originally audition for the show? Auditioned for the show. Um, March, which I wasn't going to audition for actually. I. I'd seen it for a while, it kept popping up and um, I think my agent sent it me and I looked at it and I was like, I was like, I'm not gonna audition for that because I'm not gonna get it. You know, it was one of them. I was going through a, a time, I was going through a moment and I was in work and I knew a couple of guys who were auditioning for Sky and they were like, you should audition for Sophie. And I was like, no, I was like, no, I'm not a Sophie. I'm not gonna get it. Like, I don't wanna audition for something that I know I'm not gonna get which is funny now. Yeah, my friend Helena was like, oh, what have you got to lose? Like, just just go, just like send off your tape and just see what happens. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it off. So I sent it off um, two days before the final audition day. So I kind of was like, I'm not really expecting an audition here. Um, and then the audition came through and I went in like a black spotty long dress. And then, so I did audition and came second which is crazy. Favorite experience on the show? I'm gonna take this question as in like, something that I did, like my favorite thing that I did. And I think that would probably have been, besides that all the performances, obviously they were amazing. I think getting to sing, slipping through my fingers with Maz Mori uh, in this like, the hotel we were in was like the poshest hotel in Corfu. It was crazy. And it was like down on this like restaurant that they'd cleared out for us and the sun was set in. Oh, just, she was so stunning. And cause Maz Murray started the song and then we joined in. I just remember looking at her. I think you can see it as well in the episode. I'm just, I just like, I just start welling up. I was just like, oh my God, what is my life? Like, how have I gotten to this point? I was just so grateful and I had to like really pull it back together to be like, sometimes I wish. Like, yeah, I had to, I had to really pull myself together. <laughs> some of these questions, some of you are brutal. Are you upset that you didn't get the role? No, <laughs> I mean, obviously I think, I think all, I think all 12 of us that didn't get it were probably a little bit upset, but I trust that everything happens for a reason. And um, funnily enough, when they, when we were waiting for the results and it was like me and Stevie and it was Toby and Owen, like me and Stevie had just said to each other just before coming on the stage, we were like, whatever happens, it doesn't matter. Like it, it, it quite literally does not matter because never did I think I would ever get to this point. So I'm proud of myself enough for that. And also the exposure I've had from this show now, hopefully will be the step that I needed to get my claws into something else, get into another show. So I wasn't like, when they said Stevie's name, I wasn't like, oh, 
I just was so happy for her. I was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. And also it's over. Like we had to wait six months. We had to wait six months until we found out the result. And I think just as soon as I knew it was over and we knew, I was just like, oh my God, thank God it's done. Like I can move forward now. I can really get stuck into my career, get planning on what I want to do next. You know, get back to singing lessons, get back to dancing lessons, get back into auditioning and stuff like that. So yeah, would you ever do films and TV? Yes. Currently in third year musical theatre, how do I get through the last push? Slash any advice for anyone in drama school? I'll start with the advice for anyone in drama school. I would say, I know this is easier said than done, right? We've all been there, but focus on your journey and no one else's because it's so easy to get caught up in the drama school bubble where there's favorites and you know people that you think are better than you um and there's people that you know you feel like the teachers prefer or like they're getting the main roles and you're not getting the main roles or you're getting a role that literally has like two lines and you're like why did i why has that happened it's nothing on you at all and no matter what, you will still get to showcase yourself and focusing on yourself and your journey and little things that you notice that you do well. Just because a teacher doesn't give you a compliment and they're not like, great pirouette as me, doesn't mean you didn't do a great pirouette. You probably did. I mean, I probably didn't, but you probably did. And enjoy it. I know it seems like a really, really stressful time and it is, I won't, yeah, it is. It's incredibly hard and it's so physically demanding. You're just exhausted, but please just enjoy it because when you're out, you'll want to be back in. And everyone said that to me and I was like, now I'm ready to leave, get me out. And now I'm like, take me back. And currently in third year, how do I get through the last push? Keep looking after yourself. Don't abandon yourself whilst you're trying to get an agent and you're trying to showcase yourself in your third year musical or your showcase or whatever. And also it doesn't matter what part you got. It doesn't matter. Some people get like three lines and still end up with the best agents. Go for the ones that you want. Try and be as true to yourself as you can be. And yeah, just look after yourself because it's a tough time. And the more you look after this, the more everything else works. What was the audition process like? long i'll talk through it from start to end you sent off a self-tape i had an in-person audition and a recall on the same day i think i sang anywhere but here from pretty woman you sing the song i got recalled i got to go upstairs i got you got to be seen by either david grimrod or will burton i got sold by will burton went in i also met one of the producers it was just those two and then a camera guy and then i sang my mamma mia song i sang when it takes all and my mary clayton song yes then I had to do like a questionnaire like an on paper questionnaire then i had to do a phone call questionnaire then i got through to the final 50 which was at the novello and that was like a whole day in itself. I was like, wow, I'm here for a day out. This is great. Didn't think I'd even make it here. So getting to sing on that stage, getting to meet Judy. Then um, on the day of the final 50, sorry to go back. On the day of the final 50, you had to go on stage one by one and sing, which never, barely ever, ever happens in like a proper, in like a real audition. Um, so that was kind of crazy. I'd never done that before. I had to go on the stage and like sing. And then we all went on the stage and did like a big dance call. Um, and then, yeah, so then the week after, it was like the final 35. Then it was like on the Tuesday, the final like 25. And then there was a cut halfway through the day, which actually I was meant to go to Lisbon on the Tuesday evening, but I couldn't because I, um, because I didn't get cut, which obviously was amazing. But I was like, oh God, I can't go on holiday. But booked a holiday, booked a flight for the next morning, for the Wednesday morning. So I literally had audition Monday, audition Tuesday and Tuesday evening, flew to Lisbon on the Wednesday, was there till the Friday night slash Saturday morning, then went to the audition Saturday late morning. So by Saturday, I literally was like, what have I done? I was like, why have I done this to myself? I was absolutely exhausted, but I must have done something right. Who is your favorite judge? Oh, I don't know. 
I really, I was, I've been a big fan of Alan for ages. Like I've always watched him with my family. So I think I was probably the most like starstruck to see him. So when I met Alan, I literally went up to him and I was like, I was like, hi Alan. And he was like, hello. And at that point I was like, these are like, he's real. He's, he's a real person, he's here. I had a really good chat with him actually at one point when it was later on in the process and we were sort of stood next to each other and we were waiting to go and film something. And I just turned to him and I was like, how are you Alan? In which he was like, great. We were speaking about his little program that came out um, about him in high school. And we had a really good conversation about that and how like the process he went through for that and like how he faced knockbacks. And I was like, wow, you really are just another normal person, which obviously he's a normal person, but it's so easy to forget, isn't it? Okay, next question. Did you find it unfair that people on the show already had performing credits? No, I didn't. Because when you go to auditions, there's always gonna be people with credits and people without credits. And I think the really good thing about this program was they never ever said they were gonna get a group of people who've never performed in their lives they got real people. They got people who graduated drama school. They've got people who'd been out of drama school and hadn't worked, who'd been struggling. They had people who'd been in shows. They had people who hadn't trained. They had people who were literally mid-training. Like they had like pretty much every single kind of person that is in the industry and is trying to work their way around the industry. So I would have found it even more unfair if those people weren't allowed to audition for it just because they had a credit. This is a cute question. What's your skincare routine? That's so funny, I think my skin's awful. What is my skincare routine? That's great, great question. Don't really have one to be honest. I've been using this. This is Skin and Me. Oh my God, hilarious, I'm so bad at this. And Skin and Me for Esme Bowler. I like it because it's got my name on it and it feels personal. I suffer with like red, I suffer with um, pigmentation like on my cheeks and I have really dark under eyes. So I signed up for this. This isn't advertising in the slightest. Um, I just really like it. But yeah, if you wanna sponsor me, Skin and Me, I'll be very glad to do so. Just drop me a message, just DM me. I love this, actually. This is the Welder Skin Food Mask. God, it's harder than it looks, isn't it? Come on. Hey, you can't see it because it won't do the focus thing because I'm not an influencer. But it's this Welder Skin Food Face Care Nourishing Night Cream. I love that, I wear that in the evenings. This is my sun cream. This is the thing that I think I showed it. That my friends got at me. I showed it in one of my vlogs, I think vlog one. Um, it's what my friends got me for when I went away and I still have it, so that's good. It's lasted ages. This really cleared my skin. This is the Boots Hydrochloric Acid. Um, it's like the Boots Own. It's really, really nice. I don't have anything too fancy, if I'm honest. I think the more I put on my skin, the more my skin's like, <gasps> I would like to get a better skincare routine, to be honest. So if you have any tips or anything, then put them in the comments. And also actually, if anyone knows any good things to get rid of pigmentation, let me know. <laughs> you guys and these questions, right? Someone's asked, did anyone get together on the show? <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Did anyone get together on the show? No. Sorry to not bring any more gossip for you guys. No one got together on the show. They tried, they tried to make it happen. They would ask certain people like who they fancied, um, especially Maisie. They would ask her a lot if she like fancied anyone and they asked Darcy a lot. There was a little bit with Darcy where they tried to make it out like he was pretending this was Love Island and like that was never ever the case. All were like, excuse me, we're here to perform. We're not here to find love. So that was a load of rubbish sometimes. A lot of us had boyfriends, including myself. So if, if ITV did want to sort of set people up, they, they didn't pick the right people. How do you deal with rejection in the industry? That's a really good one. I think towards the beginning of my career, when I first graduated, it was difficult to deal with because I hadn't, I know this is a very, this is coming from a very privileged place, but I hadn't faced that much rejection because I'd gone straight from high school to a college and then straight from that college to arts ed. So I'd, I'd had a pretty steady journey up until graduating. And then when I did graduate and I was auditioning and I was getting like close to things, but I was getting no's, 
uh, or I was getting cut first round and like my friends weren't, I was a bit like, what am I doing wrong? And it can really get you down when you start internalizing everything and when you start, when you think that you're the problem and that you're the reason why you didn't book that job. A lot of the time it's nothing to do with you. It can be to do with whether, if you're auditioning for understudy, it could be whether you literally fit into their costume or not. It could be because you don't fit the jigsaw. It could be because they want to see you for something else. It could be you're literally just not right, you know. I think a good piece of advice actually is that the audition is the goal. Go into that audition and think anything from here is a bonus. I know it's like easier said than done, but go into that room, give the character, do the routine, do the script well, sing the best you can, and anything beyond that is a bonus. As long as you've gone in and you've done your best, that's the main thing. I know that's so like, oh, go do your best, that's the main thing. But it genuinely is, because the casting director will remember you if you do a good job. In terms of like, just dealing with rejection, I think you just have to, it's something that you have to get used to. And we all face rejection. Samantha Box said something on the show about like, you know, she booked Elsa, but there were 200 jobs that she didn't get. There's always, there's always gonna be jobs you don't get, but the ones you do get make all the rejections worth it. Cause I had a lot of rejections before Mamma Mia. So once I'd got that job, once I'd got the yes, I was like, wow, it genuinely makes it all worth it. Are you auditioning for things at the moment? Maybe. What is your favorite ABBA song? My favorite ABBA song is, and always kind of has been, The Winner Takes It All. It was my favorite one to do at the final. I think it gets everyone going. You can't sit and listen to The Winner Takes It All without literally being like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I love it. Winner Takes It All, it's my favorite ABBA song. What did the experience teach you about yourself? That self-doubt is unnecessary and that I need to believe in myself more. Because when you don't believe in yourself, it doesn't do anything good for anyone. Self-doubt is a hard one to navigate around, but if you don't believe in yourself, then other people won't believe in you. Because how are they supposed to when you don't even have faith in yourself? So I definitely feel like this experience taught me that I need to wipe clean any self-doubt that I have because it's not helpful, I don't need it, I need to believe in myself. If you had the chance to do it all again, what would you change? Hmm, I don't know if I would change anything. The thing I'd change is probably my mindset. I think I'd have a bit more belief in myself. Will you audition for Sophie again? Slash, have you ever auditioned for Sophie before? Have I ever auditioned for Sophie before? I haven't actually. I did audition for the Royal Caribbean production. They ended up seeing me for Sandy in Greece. And then I went in and I did that and they told me to like wait outside. Then they were like, we wanna see you, but we wanna see you for Mamma Mia. Cause they both do, they do both shows. We wanna see you for Mamma Mia and we wanna see you for Understudy Donna and Tanya. And like Donna is a bit of a dream role, but I'm very aware I'm 23. I was 22 at the time. So I understand, you know, understudy, which would mean I'd be in the ensemble and then I'd play Donna and Tanya if and when. And I got quite far with that. I think I got to like the final two. So that's why when the Sophie auditions came along, I was like, well, I'm not a Sophie, but yeah. So that's funny. And will you ever audition for Sophie again? I don't know. If it came along, I wouldn't say no. Where did you train? I trained at Arts Educational Schools. Now it's just called Arts Ed. Arts Ed. Will you be at Stevie and Toby's opening night? I really, really hope so. I think we were meant to get tickets sorted for us. I really, really hope so. I kind of really hope that all 12 of us get the front row with like a glass of champagne, some nibbles, and just be there to like cheer them on. And we'll literally be like, <sighs> but yeah, I really hope so. This is funny. Actor, singer, or dancer. <laughs> and it says, what do you feel the most trained in? I would say probably singer, singer actor, act singer and then dancer. Like I can dance, but it's not my strong point. So yeah, actor singer, I would say. Actor singer, bit of a dancer. What professional jobs did you have since graduating? Um, none. I did do a lot of concerts. I did a lot of gigs. I did one of them with Darcy, actually. I did um, a t Taylor Swift concert for Sad Girl, Sad Girl shows which was so much fun. And that's where I met Darcy. So when Darcy came out in the villa, when we were in Greece, I was like, oh my God, I know you. 
Which song were you most nervous to perform? Apart from the live final, because I think that tops, you know, the nerves for that topped everything. I remember being really, really nervous to perform Dancing Queen because, you know, the performance before that, when I was with Toby and I was really ill and I gave it my all, I really, really did. Um, but they didn't know that I wasn't well. So it kind of, kind of flopped and didn't get very good feedback from that, which just hit hard and I was like, oh God. So when it came to Dancing Queen, I just knew that there was no room to mess up. There was no room for any faults. So that's why I think I look absolutely terrified during that number, because I was. I was like, oh my God, I'm absolutely terrified. I just wanted to make it to the final. So yeah, that one I was most nervous for, I think. What was your favorite episode to watch slash, if you could re-watch one, what would it be? I think my favourite one has to be the first one because we all went to Darcy's flat. Me and Darcy spent ages like blowing up balloons that said, um, you are the dancing queen or something. And I got like little Sophie stickers, like little Sophie cut out things to put in the cupcakes. And then um, we had like a big banner. So yeah, sitting around with everyone and getting to watch it for the first time just with everyone was just, oh my God, it was just the best feeling like watching yourself on TV is strange and doing it with people that were also going through that was just really really nice and we were all just so excited we'd waited so long for it to come out um if you could re-watch one which would it be yeah probably the first one it was like it was like the moment we'd been waiting for how did it feel doing the final doing the final i think i said it before but it was electric like it was incre it was absolutely incredible the energy that we all felt on that stage and like performing together and coming out the door for the first time and like hearing the audience and like you didn't even notice the cameras i forgot that it was live well no i i didn't that's a lie i didn't forget it was live but i forgot i sort of just felt it felt euphoric it just felt like incredible i've never done anything like that in my life and i don't know if or when i'll ever do anything like that again so tried hard to like cherish the moment. It was terrifying. It was, it was absolutely terrifying. I was stood behind the door waiting to come on because I was the first one to do, 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 to like come on. I was like, if I mess this up, that's it, it's over. But I didn't, I did my absolute best. So yeah, I was just so happy to be there and it was the best night of my life. How do you balance jobs and auditions and keeping up with training? Kind of what I mentioned before, it's like trying not to prioritize your muggle job and trying to prioritize you as much as you can you know there's going to be times where you, when you come home from work and you're like i could go to the gym but i really can't be bothered that's okay don't punish yourself for not wanting to do something because you've worked so hard that day or like it's your only day off but just try as much as you can to fit little things in every day like doing a little vocal warm-up when, whenever you can singing because you enjoy it on your day off, not because you're like, oh God, now I have to sing because I need to keep up my voice. Just doing it because you enjoy it. Going to dance classes because you enjoy them and it's a good form of exercise. And you know, you wanna keep your mind and your body fit and healthy. Don't get weighed down by whatever muggle job you end up with. But it is hard. It is hard to find the time. Like, will you ever find the right balance? I don't know. Have I found the right balance yet? I don't know, the only thing you can do is to try your best to focus on the job that you want to be doing and not the job that you are stuck in at the moment, if that makes sense. What was your time like at Arts Ed? My time at Arts Ed was probably the best years of my life. Not to be dramatic, I had a great time. I met the best people. I had incredible training. It was hard because it was my dream school. I just felt so happy and like privileged to be there that I knew I had to make the most of it and I knew I had to make the most of every opportunity that Arts Ed gave me and I I feel like I did and I hope I did. I absolutely loved it. If you did get the part of Sophie, which boy would you have wanted as your Sky, Toby or Owen? Either, they're both amazing. They both have such different qualities. You know, when we had rehearsals in London and we were rehearsing at Pineapple with the company, we had to learn like the end of the show kind of worked out in a way that it was usually like me rehearsing with Toby and Stevie rehearsing with Owen but at the same time like me and Owen were really close and like 
such good friends that we could have performed together. It's just the way that it worked out in terms of like doing it as pairs. You know, I think me and Toby had a really good onstage chemistry. I think me and Owen had a really good friendship bond. Like I would have, I would have had any, any either, any of the seven I would have had. I think all the boys were on that show for a reason because they were all so talented. So yeah, that's my answer to that one. How do you feel knowing you got so close to the part? Great, incredible, like I feel very honored. Like I know that's a strong word, but I do feel very honored because the fact that I wasn't gonna audition and then I did get so close just proves that what is meant for you will not pass you by, I think. Yeah, I felt very honored to get so close. Tips for nerves in auditions. Oh, this was a very good piece of advice that I got given once and I try and take it to every audition. And it's that the people on the audition panel want you to be good. They're not sat there waiting for the next person to go in being like, oh God, I hope they're bad. They want you to be good. So you need to walk into that room with the energy of like, wow, thank God I'm here. Thank God I'm here, I'm gonna save your day. Yeah, just, just know that they want you to be good and they want you to do your best. How was your experience on the show? My experience on the show, it was hard. Like at the end of the day, it was an audition process in Greece with strange circumstances. And I think the judges were quite harsh on me. A lot of people have said this to me afterwards that they were quite harsh on me and I agree, I think they were. Um, it was very special as well. It's something that I will, I will absolutely never, ever, ever forget. Are you happy for Stevie? Of course I'm happy for Stevie. And I think it's important I say this, when you're in this industry, you are gonna be up against so many of your friends. It's always the way. Like I've never been to, I don't think I've ever been to an audition where I've not seen someone that I know, someone that I like really, really like and really get along with. So you just know that what is meant for you won't pass you by. Like I know if I was meant to play Sophie, then I would. And Stevie is meant to play Sophie and she's gonna be incredible, she's gonna be amazing. And we both said that to each other in the dressing room before we went on, we were like, you know what, I'm not nervous because I know that whatever happens, happens for a reason. And if you get it, you're meant to get it. If I get it, I'm meant to get it. So yes, of course I'm happy for it. And there's no room to be bitter in this industry and there's no room to be jealous. And there's gonna be things that your friends will get that you don't. So yeah, you know, you're constantly up against your friends, but just know that what is meant for you will not pass you by. And the last question is, what's next? The answer to that is, I don't know. I have no idea, only time will tell. I'm currently working back making coffee and teaching, which has actually been quite nice. It's been nice to have a routine again. It's been nice to see all my old colleagues and see everyone that supported me through the journey and it's nice to just have a routine back again. And as for this year goes, like, it's, it's so exciting. Like I, I, like, I have no idea what's gonna happen. And that is so, that's so exciting. Anything could happen. Like this time last year, I was, I was very much prepared to not work. I was very much like, you know, do I give up? Is this not gonna happen for me? I was, I was just getting on with my life and I was finding other things in my life that make me happy and that I enjoy doing. And I'm gonna continue to do that, like, you can't live your life for the industry. You have to find things that you enjoy outside of the industry or it will just consume you and like it will take over your life. So yeah, whatever happens, happens. And I'm just excited to see what this year brings. Yeah, in answer to that, I don't know. What's next? I don't know. So that is it. I was as truthful as I can be. And yeah, as I say, Take everything I say with a pinch of salt. If there's a piece of advice that you like and you wanna take it, do it. If not, that's absolutely fine. As I say, I'm just, I'm just another performer, just trying to make it in this career. You know, it's just gonna happen. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I hope I answered everyone's questions, okay? If you did like this, like the video, subscribe to my channel. I'll put some more things up on here and comment anything that you wanna see and anything that you would like me to do next. I had so much fun doing this. This was great, great fun for me. Just wanna thank everyone for all the love and support and for everyone who sent in all these questions. There were so many um, and I hope that I've answered all of them. And yeah, just sending everyone all the love 
and I hope everyone's had a great start to the new year. Yeah, that's me. Bye. Until next time. Bye.